Okay, so let's get started with our first test of SketchUp Pro 2021 running on the brand new MacBook M1 Pro. And you can see I've opened up a little model of a piece of furniture here, and I've also got the uh, V-Ray plugin loaded as well. So I thought that'd be kind of fun to show you how fast it renders with the V-Ray on things like this simple sort of sofa. You can almost work in real time. And if you do notice um, across on the side there, I've got my uh, cores uh, running away with my graphics GPU and my CPU cores, just to show you on the Mac what's going on underneath the bonnet while we're working. So I hope you enjoyed that quick little demo. You can see it's very, very quick. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go on to our next little project and I'm going to go and import a file from Vectorworks. It's quite a large file that I've exported as a 3DS format. And I just want to see how this imports. Now, uh, it looks like it's importing really quick. While that's importing, we'll just have a quick look at the Vectorworks model that was exported. Um, as you know, if you've seen my channel, I'm a huge fan of Vectorworks 3D. In fact, I use it in preference really to SketchUp modeling and I'm always trying to get my clients to uh, move across to Vectorworks 3D rather than SketchUp. But SketchUp does have a place for a lot of clients I know and it works extremely well with Vectorworks, both um, importing the models and we can import SketchUp models as well. So basically you can see that it's actually kind of created the model Let's click OK, it loaded in, took a second or two to load in, it's pretty big. But let's just click and snap it down to the um, origin there. OK, just snap that down. Excellent. OK, so what we should be able to do is orbit around now. Um, you can see it's selected, but you can see there is a lot of detail in the model, including all those little trees and buildings and existing buildings. Now, it's an interesting project, this. This was for a big master plan project um, that I worked on for the next stage of Canary Wharf as you can see, it's called Wood Wharf. And basically uh, the model was all constructed in Vectorworks, but you know, I know that there are some plugins for uh, SketchUp that I might want to use potentially like the V-Ray render. So I just thought I'd load it in and do a quick test. Um, so when I click on the V-Ray render, it takes a second to load in and you can see I can still kind of move around with those uh, V-Ray settings going. And as soon as it kind of let go, it kind of catches up and the render starts to refine. So that's quite fast. Um, it's quite garish with the green, I admit, but we can change all of that if needed. Okay, so I've edited the model a little bit, um, taken away that bright green texture, just because I wanted to get slightly more realistic sort of renders. Um, and again, when you can see I click onto the V-Ray, it does a really nice job at rendering. Now this model does need a bit more refinement before it's kind of ready, but I think with a bit more work, um, you could see how the Vectorworks model started in Vectorworks could end up in SketchUp. Um, and we could enhance that with some SketchUp modeling as well. And then of course, we've got that nice sort of V-Ray rendering that we can apply. So what I'm going to do now is just click the V-Ray to open up the actual sort of uh, V-Ray frame buffer as it were and do a sort of almost like a final quality render rather than a viewport render just to get a feel for that. And again it's really really quick so this sort of global illuminated uh, V-Ray type rendering seems very very fast and approachable. Um, I think with this demo version we're limited in the size that I can render um, but if you do have a full copy of V-Ray you'll be able to render pretty nice, substantial, large images. So V-Ray for Vectorworks, as well as at SketchUp. So if you are a SketchUp user and you use Vectorworks as well, I cannot recommend enough trying a bit more 3D Vectorworks. Um, check out my other videos on the channel. There's a lot of tutorials there that will show you how amazing Vectorworks is for modeling. But for SketchUp users, I think the M1 Pro absolutely smashes it, as you can see. Okay, good. So we're going to go on to our next project. Now, this is one that I've downloaded from the web and it's my favorite building by one of my favorite architects in the world. And it won't take you long to see. There we go. Frank Lloyd Wright, Falling Water. Um, if you do check out my channel, I did a massive tutorial series on Twin Motion using Falling Water as a great example. But this is a very nice model that I found. And I think if you just search on the 3D warehouse, you'll be able to locate that um, and get it too. Now, if you do want to, you can just sort of orbit around this model on the new M1 uh, MacBook Pro really, really smoothly, as you can see. Normally, big models like this, there can be a bit of a delay. Things like the shadows can sort of take a bit longer. Um, and when you kind of spin around, sometimes it can be quite sort of jerky. But what I'm seeing here is really nice performance for this quite complicated SketchUp model. 
Um, so I definitely think this would be a really nice tool for modeling in SketchUp. If I did use SketchUp more for my modeling, as I say, I'm a big Vectorworks fan, so I tend to do it there. Um, but you know, I know that many, many of my clients, interior designers and architects and landscape consultants, they really do like SketchUp and I do get it. It's a very approachable bit of software. So what do you think? I think this is a very nice, smooth, slick performance. Um, really nice transition of the graphics um, and it's a particularly nice little model to demo with. So I just thought that'd be fun to show you. Now, if you are a sort of massive SketchUp user, I would say the M1 Pro with 16 gig of RAM will honestly be enough. I've been testing this machine now for nearly two and a half weeks. And so far, I've never run out of memory, not even come close. It's never slowed down. I honestly haven't even heard the fans. It's almost like it doesn't have fans. It's so quiet and silent, which I have to say, compared to my last computer with an eGPU, was really quite surprisingly noisy. You know, by the end of the day, you're really quite tired of that noise. So here is the model in V-Ray. You can see even V-Ray uh, renders that super fast. So for the final part of this quick test, I'm going to try out the new Datasmith Direct Link from uh, the SketchUp to Twinmotion again. Not tried this before on this uh, model or this version of SketchUp. So basically, let's go ahead and export the Datasmith. Um, that seemed pretty quick in itself. Then I'm going to go to Twin Motion, and when I click Import, you should see if I go to Import Direct Link, the native SketchUp uh, Direct Link is already there. Now I've got a few different options as I've talked about before. I normally go for uh, Keep Hierarchy, but this time I'm just going to go for Collapse by Material to get a slightly smaller file and just see how that looks. And let's see how that takes to import. Um, so here we go. Let's go back into SketchUp click onto the direct sync button. So this is quite a nice thing to do. You can see the model's imported. Um, we'll have a quick move around. So first impressions of the model are it's running quite nice and smooth with a good frame rate. Does look like there's a few glitches in some of the uh, polygons missing. I'm not quite sure what that could be. It might be like double-sided surfaces in the SketchUp model. As I say, I didn't create this model. Um, so I'm really just sort of giving you a quick overview. So I think maybe that needs a bit of work, a bit of refinement, and it might be that if we converted to some kind of mesh that that would come through a bit better. So we'll need to do a bit more testing on the SketchUp to Twin Motion, but I've seen this working before with the right kind of models and it works extremely well. Now I just thought I'd round off with a announcement that I'm doing a Vectorworks and Twin Motion webinar. So please come and join us on Tuesday the 16th from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time and you'll see some of the lovely images I created during this webinar using Vectorworks and Twin Motion. And it's going to be a really exciting webinar. And if you haven't seen Twin Motion in action, you'll love it. Thanks for joining us. Bye bye.